Hello, and welcome to Vice Rhino's channel. Dr. Josh Bowen here. And Dr. Kip Davis. We're happy to be here. Today, we are going to be reviewing a section of an interview that Sean McDowell did with Joel Kramer. Kramer holds an MA in archaeology from the University of the Holy Land. The University of the Holy Land is a Christian graduate school located in Jerusalem. It was founded in 1986 by Stephen and Claire Fawn, and Stephen continues to serve as the school's president. Degrees from the University of the Holy Land are accredited by the Asia Theological Association. In this video, entitled How Archaeology Supports the Bible, a conversation with Joel Kramer, McDowell asks Kramer to explain how the archaeology of the city of Jericho can be understood to support the historicity of the Joshua Conquest narrative. Let's take a look. When I went to Israel 10 years ago with you, one of my favorite things is you took us to Jericho because the traditional story is Kathleen Kenyon in the middle of the 20th century, roughly, pretty much dismissed that Jericho matches up with the biblical record. Without going into all the detail, what is just one or two things you found on site digging there that makes you think, ah, uh, that's a little bit too quick. There is some evidence that supports the biblical account. You mean at Jericho specifically? At Jericho, yeah. Yeah, because I haven't ever actually dug at Jericho, but- um, Okay. I really appreciate him saying this up front. Neither one of us have dug at Jericho either. But yeah, but but the, um, but the but I've studied Jericho for years and years and years, and, um, and it, it is a good example that, you know, we got to look at things in, in the big picture. This does not sound promising to me. McDowell is focusing in on the site of Jericho specifically, and Kramer appears to be preparing the audience for the problems with the site from the perspective of a traditional date for the Exodus and conquest. That's good. The problem is that he sounds like he is trying to work his conclusion. If Jericho doesn't fit, let's focus on all other things that might fit better. Um, first of all, one thing we focus on is everything that the archaeologists disagree about. What's amazing is everything that the archaeologists agree about. Absolutely. And the consensus is absolutely that Jericho's archaeological record does not support the historicity of the narrative that is presented in the Hebrew Bible. I think it is important to point out here that Jericho is one of the most extensively excavated sites in all of Palestine and Israel. Charles Warren made the first excavations back in 1868, and the site has been frequented dozens of times by archaeologists for study over the last 150 years. An Italian-Palestinian joint excavation most recently conducted 13 digs between 1997 and 2017. So, it should be noted that the scholarly consensus about various features at Jericho is established on multiple points of data. So think about Jericho. They all agree that um, Jericho is Jericho. How do they okay. know that Jericho is Jericho? Uh, well, the only ancient text that talks about Jericho from the time period, you know, Joshua and the conquest is the Bible. This is an odd thing to point out. As we will see, one of the main problems for the traditional position is that there are incredibly scanty late Bronze Age remains at the site. Given its meager occupation, is it terribly surprising that the city does not show up in the writing during this period? It is also hard to know what Kramer means when he says from the time period of Joshua and the conquest. If he means that the biblical texts date back to the time of Joshua and the conquest, then he is sorely mistaken. These are in no way contemporaneous accounts of historical events. Rather, they were most likely written in the first half of the first millennium, not reaching their final form until even later. So the only way that they even know that they're talking about Jericho is through the Bible. Let's assume for a second that this is correct and that the only way that archaeologists knew or decided to dig at the site was the stories in the Old Testament. So, what on earth does that tell us about the historical validity of the stories that the Hebrew Bible associates with the site? nothing. Starting off with this as a point for the validity of his position does not bode well for his case. And uh, everybody agrees that Jericho was Canaanite, and then something happened, 
And then later in history, it became Israelite. And so uh, what happened there? Well, maybe we should go to the one historical, you know, the, the historical document that we have that tells us what happened. This is a very clear example of begging the question. If the goal is to demonstrate the validity of the historical account of the Old Testament, to show that it is a historically reliable document, we cannot then appeal to what it says as a historical document. In fact, as we will see, the stories in the Hebrew Bible are in no way historical documents in the modern sense of the term. The stories about Jericho appear in what scholars call the Deuteronomistic history, which is possibly an unfortunate label given that the text is not the kind of history that we imagine at the outset. The Deuteronomistic history comprises a large section of the Old Testament, Joshua, Judges, Samuel, and Kings. And scholars tend to think it was written and redacted over hundreds of years, reaching its final form at some point during or after the Babylonian exile in the 5th century BCE. Most regard it as a propaganda piece, constructed around the singular question of how well or poorly the kings of Judah and Israel responded to the instructions for Torah obedience put forward in the book of Deuteronomy. Since it is so heavily invested in the surrounding theological questions, this tends to severely undermine its usefulness as a historical source. Then um, everybody agrees that the city wall of Jericho collapsed. You have a fallen wall at Jericho, and what, of course, is Jericho famous for in the Bible? It's famous for the walls that came tumbling down. Pay attention to the vague and general way that Kramer is presenting the evidence that we have from Jericho. There was a destruction. We have evidence of wall collapse. Something happened, and later there was Israelite occupation. If one does not engage with the details of any of these statements, when taken together, they can sound quite convincing. For example, yes, there was a wall that came tumbling down at Jericho, and the remains of it can be seen at the site. What he doesn't say is that the wall does not date to the late 15th century, when the traditional date of the conquest needs it to be dated to, but rather to a thousand years earlier. In other words, sure, there is a wall that came down, but it came down a thousand years too early. Moreover, what this means is that the broken walls of Jericho were already known by the people living in the area in the early to mid-first millennium BCE, when scholars tend to think that the Bible stories were written. So, what you have is people seeing the ruins of this city with its great walls that were obviously destroyed sometime in the very distant past, and openly wondering about what happened. Could it have been our ancestors entering the land from the Sinai wilderness who caused this great destruction? Could it have been aided by Yahweh himself? Could it have been a spectacular miracle that contributed to our self-identity as the people of the one true God? Could it have been part of an important lesson about the value of obedience and the holiness of God? And so really when you boil down to what, uh, what in this case, Kathleen Kenyon is uh, saying critically about the Bible, is she's, she's saying that, well, even though this is Jericho, even though this was Canaanite and became Israelite, even though we have a fallen wall and a burned destruction here, the Bible can't be true because there's this one particular kind of pottery that, that uh, is from Cyprus that, wasn't, that I didn't find here. First of all, this is a gross mischaracterization of the reason for dating the wall and destruction layers to periods other than the late 15th century BCE. While pottery obviously plays a significant role in dating at the site, as is incredibly common in archaeological excavations, it is not simply a matter of a scholar saying, oh, I don't see this one type of pottery, and that's all I'm basing my conclusions on. Piotr Biankowski, for example, published an entire monograph on the Late Bronze Age finds in 1986. This leads us to our second point. 
Kathleen Kenyon conducted some of the most significant excavations at the site in the 1950s, and she is certainly not alone in her conclusions. In fact, the overwhelming consensus among archaeologists and biblical scholars is that Jericho was a small, unfortified site during the Late Bronze Age. No walls, no massive city. Even mainstream conservative scholars disagree that Jericho's destruction would have taken place in the 15th century. To say that his comment is disingenuous is an understatement. So um, really it's, uh, it's, it's, it's just an illogical, ridiculous claim that in the big picture, everything fits. No, everything doesn't fit. That's the point. The traditional dating of Joshua's conquest, that the Israelites conquered many cities in the Negev, Transjordan, and Cisjordan in the late 15th century BCE, or the late Bronze Age, is held by almost no one, because in the big picture, and in the details, nothing fits. There's no large city, there are no major walls, no walls at all, and almost no occupation at the site. And these are just a few of the things, both archaeologically and historically, that don't fit. He's just wrong here. And so they're going to try to disqualify, the, you know, based on some little my, tiny detail that here, here's, here's a possibility. Maybe the archaeologist is wrong hmm. and the Bible is right. You know, that's a possibility right there. Nope. You would have to argue that the supermajority of archaeologists are wrong. Let's just cite two examples. Eric Klein writes, Kenyon's excavations therefore implied that if Joshua and the Israelites had invaded Canaan during the Middle or Late Bronze Age, between 1550 BC and 1200 BC, they would have found Jericho almost totally, if not completely, deserted and without any of its vaunted fortifications still present. In addition, Finkelstein and Silberman conclude, in the case of Jericho, there was no trace of a settlement of any kind in the 13th century BCE, and the earlier late bronze settlement dating to the 14th century BCE was small and poor, almost insignificant and unfortified. There was also no sign of a destruction. Maybe you, the one who has concluded the Bible must be historically reliable, are wrong. And so, and so, uh, yeah, you have all these examples of, um, of these minute details that nobody understands that they're trying to use to, um, to claim that the Bible uh, doesn't get it right. Minute details? Minute details? There is no city. There is no wall. There is little to no occupation. These are not minute details. When ignoring the big picture of how is it that this, the, this, the biblical text told archaeologists what they would find if they ever got around to digging Jericho, uh, what they would find uh, under the ground. And, they, and it told us what would be found, this fallen wall, thousands of years before archaeologists came along and dug it and found a fallen wall. Yeah, and just a thousand years too early, too. All right. Yeah, and just a shade under a decade, too. All right. Um, a seven-year-old would understand that gotcha. as evidence, <laughs> and that gotcha. would be the end of the story. You know, they, they wouldn't understand this whole explanation about imported pottery from Cyprus and, and, uh, and why that, uh, you know, discounts the Bible. Well, that's why we don't expect seven-year-olds to make these types of determinations. <laughs> I should point out that our seven-year-old believed that God was real because she Googled God and a picture of him came up. It, it takes trained professionals to excavate a site, analyze the material culture, and formulate and interpret a model that best accounts for the data. And so, um, really, uh, when you look at the criticisms of the Bible, they, they're really groundless. They're not intimidating. Well, they're anything but groundless, and whether Kramer is intimidated by the data is irrelevant. But I think the usage of this term is revealing. 
the fact that intimidation is something that Kramer's audience might experience and also should be wary of indicates that his goal at the outset is the validation of the biblical accounts. Scholars are not ever intimidated by the evidence. But this is something that apologists will expend all their energy to deflect and avoid, which is precisely what Kramer is doing in this video. What matters is what the archaeological evidence tells us and how the experts in the field have interpreted the data. If I could, I'd like to conclude with a quote from a chapter on the archaeology of the conquest narrative in my forthcoming book, The Atheist Handbook to the Old Testament, Volume 2, which should come out around July of 2022. In summation, when we consider the city of Jericho that the Israelites would have encountered in the late Bronze Age, whether at the end of the 15th century, the more traditional date, or in the mid to late 13th century, what is the picture that the archaeological data paint for us? First, there is a clear lack of significant occupation during the Late Bronze Age. This is followed by an abandonment of the site at the beginning of the 13th century. Not only were there no massive walls and fortifications, there appears to have been no wall at all during the Late Bronze Age. So, what does all of this mean? Well, with respect to Jericho, even if we were to assume that Joshua and the Israelites had come upon the city during the Late Bronze Age, either early or late, they would have been fighting either a small, unwalled village, or even a completely abandoned site. Do either of these possibilities match up with what the Old Testament narrative tells us? Obviously not. Well, that's all for now. Stay tuned to Vice Rhino's channel for discussions on more topics like these. And be sure to visit Digital Hammurabi and Kip Davis's YouTube channels, linked in the description below, for more information on the Old Testament, the Ancient Near East, and the Dead Sea Scrolls.